If these Ice Age animals never went extinct, how would they survive today? This is a question that is becoming more real every single day. You know, because scientists lack a slowdown button with their current breakthrough discoveries. So I took it upon myself to pick some of the coolest and most notable animals from the Ice Age to see and rank how they would perform in the modern era. Animal number one, Woolly Rhinoceros. The Woolly Rhinoceros roamed the cold steppes of ancient Europe and Northern Asia, living alongside mammoths and early humans. Measuring around 12 feet long, weighing up to 6,000 pounds and standing about 6-7 feet tall, they were equipped with thick fur, a massive hump for fat storage, and two formidable horns, made for defense and foraging under snow. While it played an important ecological role as a grazer and shaped the tundra, its aggressive temperament and need for frigid, open environments would make modern survival extremely difficult. Where climate change has all but eliminated the cold steppe biome it thrived in, and modern human settlements leave little room for such a gigantic creature. Now, considering that current day rhinos are not doing so hot either, since they are constantly hunted by humans, it would be no surprise that the bigger version of the rhino, with the added item drop of rare fur, would make them a more valuable target. Making me give them a 2 out of 10 for survivability, simply due to the fact that humans will always be humans. Animal number 2 Short-Faced Bear Towering over modern bears, the short-faced bear was among the most powerful predators of the Ice Age, so you may question my decision to give them a survivability chance of 2 out of 10. Though it was a massive creature that weighed about 1,500 pounds to 3,500 pounds, was 6 feet tall at the shoulders, and could reach heights up to 11 to 12 feet tall when standing upright, it would be human fear and hunting habits that would make this creature's new life very hard. And can you blame us? Because how could you not be scared of a fast, long-winged creature with a bite force that could divorce your top half from your bottom half? And also, I bet that they would make an awesome rug. So if it was brought back to life in today's world, it would struggle with limited hunting grounds, competition with other predators such as bears, big cats, and wolves, all of which that are adapted perfectly to their environment and human gun calibers, leaving this monstrous animal stuck in zoos, ironically enough, for their own safety. Animal number three. Megalania. This animal was just an enormous monitor lizard, being one of the largest terrestrial lizards to ever live. Dominating the Australian landscape, because of course they did, these lizards could grow up to 23 feet long, stood about 5 feet tall at the shoulder, and weighed between 1,300 and 4,000 pounds. Megalania was a fearsome apex predator, where just like the modern Komodo dragon, it may have been venomous, delivering a toxic bite that would weaken its prey before consuming it. As a cold-blooded reptile, it may have required warmer climates and large open territories to thrive, meaning that reintroducing such a massive carnivore today would be quite difficult. Due to habitat fragmentation, humans, and the scarcity of prey large enough to sustain it, its potential danger to livestock and people would make coexistence nearly impossible, giving it a modern survival rating of 3 out of 10. Animal number 4. The Ground Sloth. Being one of the most massive land mammals in history, Megatherium was a ground-dwelling sloth that lived in South America. Oh, how far you have fallen. Megatherium could reach lengths of 20 feet, weighed up to around 8,500 pounds, and stood up to 12 feet tall when rearing up. It was practically just a shaggy bear on steroids. Despite its size and intimidating claws, it was a slow-moving herbivore, feeding mainly on leaves and fruits. In today's world, its bulk and sluggish speed would make it highly vulnerable to getting clapped by predators and human interference. Habitat loss, competition from faster herbivores, and a lack of undisturbed forests would present major obstacles to any reintroduction efforts. While they may be okay in reserves, they are just too vulnerable to modern day obstacles, making me give it a survival rating of 3 out of 10. Animal number 5, American Mastodon. Unlike its mammoth cousin, the American Mastodon preferred forested environments, browsing on trees and shrubs with its large conical molars. It resembled a stockier, shorter elephant, where it stood 8 to 10 feet tall, measured 10 to 14 feet long, and weighed 8,000 to 12,000 pounds. Today, their dependence on dense, temperate forests and large roaming territories would clash with agriculture and urban development. Another reason they wouldn't do so hot in today's world is because it is too hot, since global warming and increased wildfire risk threatened the forest ecosystem they relied on. Despite their less flashy image compared to mammoths, mastodons were still critical to their ecosystem systems and would struggle to find a place in the modern world, having a survival rating of 4 out of 10. Animal number 6, Glyptodon. 
The Glyptodon was a massive armored herbivore that lived in South America. Just imagine a Volkswagen Beetle with a tail club, because that's exactly what it is. They measured around 10 feet long, stood 5 feet tall, and weighed between 2,000 to 4,000 pounds. Just an absolute f***ing unit. They had a protective shell made of bony plates, a short snout, and powerful clubbed tail, likely used for defense. Just a pure knockoff of the Ankylosaurus. Though relatively peaceful, its slow movements and bulky frame would leave it vulnerable in modern habitats, filled with fast predators and, of course, humans. While it could possibly survive in large protected wildlife reserves, urban expansion, and agricultural development would greatly limit its range. Still, this is one of the more tame options of animals to bring back to life, where they gain a survival rating of 5 out of 10 from me. Animal number 7. Woolly Mammoth One of the most iconic Ice Age creatures, as we all know, was a close relative of today's elephants, but they were just so much cooler. They stood up to 9 to 11 feet tall, stretched 13 to 15 feet long, and weighed between 6,000 and 12,000 pounds, where they were perfectly adapted to the freezing climates of Eurasia and North America. Since they sported thick fur, a layer of insulated fat, and long curved tusks used for defense, combat, and digging through snow. Efforts to revive the mammoth through genetic engineering are underway, aiming to create mammoth-elephant hybrids for arctic rewilding. However, even if successful, today's rapidly warming climate, limited tundra space, and human land use make long-term survival questionable, meaning that they may only be reserved for the zoos. With the mammoth being one of the more plausible candidates for de-extinction, I will also give them a survivability of 5 out of 10, so sorry to tell you Manny, but you would suck in today's world. Animal number 8, Saber-Toothed Cat. Now, let's be honest, Diego from the Ice Age was one sexy bastard. Anyway, the saber-toothed cat was also known as the Smilodon, where it is known for its 11-inch curved canine teeth. It was a stocky, muscular cat that measured 5 to 8 feet long, was about 3.5 feet tall at the shoulder, and weighed 350 to 620 pounds. The Smilodon was well built for ambushing rather than chasing, where they likely preyed on large, slow-moving herbivores. With its specialized build and hunting style, it might struggle to adapt to faster, smaller modern prey, while facing intense competition from modern carnivores like lions, tigers, and bears. But with that being said, given the right environment and prey, it could potentially find a niche. Though man's fears and livestock conflicts would be major barriers, preventing it from getting a survivability rate higher than 5 out of 10. Animal number 9, Irish Elk. Despite its name, the Irish elk was neither exclusively Irish nor an elk. Good job, scientists. You screwed up the easiest part of classifying a creature once again. Anyway, it was just a giant deer species that roamed Europe and Asia, where it could grow up to 7 feet tall at the shoulder and could stretch up to about 10 feet long. They were massive creatures that could weigh around 1,300 pounds, where their most impressive feature being their gigantic antlers, which could span up to 12 feet wide. These massive antlers likely played a significant role in mating displays, but ironically enough, it was these same antlers that got them pooned to multiply that also ended up getting a lot of them pwned and subtracted by predators. Since they posed a challenge in dense forests, potentially contributing to the species' extinction due to their inability to run away from the much more agile predators of the time. While its size and browsing diet could still allow it to fit into some modern-day grassland habitats, climate change, habitat loss, and hunting practices pressures would still be a major risk, making them have a survivability rate of 6 out of 10, making them one of the most feasible creatures from the Ice Age to bring back to life. Animal number 10, Dire Wolf. Now, I'm sure that you have seen and heard the news of the dire wolf being brought back to life. Even though the three pups are not true dire wolves, but rather gray wolves that have been genetically modified by using the ancient dire wolf DNA to edit the gray wolf genome to resemble dire wolves, the answer to the question of whether or not they could survive may not be left up to human imagination anymore. As you have probably seen from Game of Thrones, the dire wolf was just a slightly larger and stockier build of today's gray wolves, where they stood about two and a half feet tall at the shoulder was around around 5 feet long and weighed between 130 to 175 pounds, with some specimens being even larger. But this might actually hinder them, since the reason the gray wolf is so successful is because of their smaller size, which is perfectly adapted to fit today's modern world. 
but ignoring that, they had powerful jaws and teeth for hunting megafauna, where they too hunted in packs. Unlike some of the other species here, the dire wolves' physiology and behavior are close enough to modern wolves that it might have a fighting chance if brought back to life. However, hybridization with gray wolves' disease and human-wildlife conflict could still pose serious threats. But still, if any Ice Age animal could reintegrate into modern ecosystems, it would probably be this one, making me give them a survivability rating of 8 out of 10. I think that it was really interesting to see how animals from such a different era could survive in today's world, where if scientists continue to fuck around, we may actually find out. Anyway, I would like to thank you all for watching, please like and subscribe Poppy, and I will see you in another episode.